Hello everyone and welcome to QuickSafe TV. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and roam the wilderness of Skyrim to find something entertaining and talk a little bit about the game. Uh, as you know, the Skyrim came out on 11.11 and the only coverage extensive... There, there was no extensive coverage for me, alright? <laughs> I've been busy exploring the game, but I would like to show a little bit for players who are new to the game how the playing of the game will work on the higher levels and how well actually what what things and tricks do I use in my own gameplay that's what you're seeing right now is a soul trap I enchanted my ball with a soul trap effect for one second which actually only activates whenever I kill the target and what happens with the soul trap is I capture the soul of the creature it can be any kind of creature, it can be a human, it can be a bear, it can be a dog, a wolf, whatever it is and fills the soul gem, uh, soul stone, as long as I have the soul stone if I don't have the soul stone big enough to contain the soul of the creature, I don't get anything from it, right? So I better always have the soul stones ready. Okay, now we just took down the Spriggan. One of the really dangerous enemies if you're not prepared. One of relatively easy enemies when you have the healing potions. <laughs> um, just like any other player who plays Skyrim, I think everybody uses that. I use the quick menu. In quick menu I keep my bow, my weapon, my spells, fast healing, my potion of extreme healing, I keep only one, and the torch. I for any other for anyone who's playing the game and doesn't yet know how to organize his quick menu, I would suggest to put as few things there as possible. The less things you have there, the better the less time you will search for them. The longer you search, the less effective you are, basically. Just imagine, you're in the middle of combat, and what happens? Although the game pauses, you just, you just waste your own time. You have to browse through hundreds of favorited items for actually no reason, which you never use in combat, which just clutter the space. I think it's a dragon flying over there. I seen the shadow. Oh, yes, that's the dragon. I think you want to have a dragon fight. It's going to be more interesting than I expected. Okay. In dragon fights, it's important to know your strong sides and important to know the dragon's strong sides, okay? You have to remember how you fight most effectively and use this effective way. And in general, you would like, as a mage or an archer, you would like to keep the distance with the dragon. Don't forget, I'm playing right now and all this time, and in general this playthrough, I'm playing on the master difficulty. So keep in mind that it might be easier or just as hard <laughs> in your own experience when you play the game. The important idea on Master is to have your companion and upgrade him or her as much as you can. In my case it's Lydia, uh, which you... I'm not gonna spoil anything, it's just one of the possible companions in the game. I equipped her with heavy armor, gave her heavy weaponry, good weaponry, heavy shield, so she can stand a lot of punishment in close combat. As you might actually see, her armor, her body armor, is made of the dragon. So dragon should feel quite intimidated by this sight. My armor is made of glass, I'm probably not as intimidating, however, I'm in a process of creating the dragon armor, I just never enchanted it properly yet, and so I don't use it. It's very important to know that dragon blows and distant attacks are very very powerful you have to be careful and once he deals any substantial damage to you you should heal it out using your healing spells or healing potions remember that try to avoid saving during the battle with the dragon because it might endanger the whole process because you might just die the next second after you save and you're just gonna waste the save file Try not to chase the dragon a lot, especially in the woods, like it's happening right now. Notice how the dragons just select where he wants to fight. I think it ran, uh, fights random creatures. My general idea right now is to get him on the open ground and keep hitting him with arrows in there. I need some basic cover for myself. I don't need a lot, but I don't want the dragon to have a lot of cover. 
Now it's gonna be a really dangerous situation for me because the Dragon Breath is really far reaching and I have no actual cover against it. Except these trees. Try to deal as much damage as possible while the dragon is on the ground. In case of the ranged weapon, keep keep spending the arrows on the enemy. Don't be ashamed to use healing potions and healing spells. Don't forget that if you don't do that, if you don't practice these ideas about healing spells and potions, what might eventually happen is that you're gonna get killed really quick without you doing anything actually wrong, just not fast enough. <laughs> Dragon's damage is enough to kill even the most seasoned here, just so be really careful about that or have the specific enchantments ready. Okay, we're done with the dragon. Dragon is dead. Now just get a little bit closer, loot the body, enjoy your kill. What's gonna happen, the body will... How should I put it? Burn away and you will consume the dragon's soul. It's the first time I'm encountering an elder dragon and I hope you enjoy it. Now we're just gonna go ahead and take the, the um, loot, take some gold, some arrows, take all the ar arrows we spent back, some materials, iron bone, uh, dragon bones, dragon scales, which we're later gonna use in crafting. Dragon soul absorbed. Dragon souls you will use in order to unlock dragon shouts. Dragon shouts, shouts, not dragon shouts, dra shouts are a form of ancient magic which are used in order to... Uh, they can be used by any character, of course, by the only, by, but only ones who can master it, right? Wolfric the Stone Clock is one of them. You are another because you are dragonborn, right? It's very simple. The idea is, it doesn't hurt to have them with you, and you will have quite a variety of them. I myself prepare one called Aura Whisper. Uh, when you use it, all the it actually provides Lost. you with a vision of life. Right? Okay, so now I know that inside here there's something. Be that bandits, be that something else, it allows me to be prepared for, for what lies ahead. What dangers lies ahead. Okay. Good, good. You might notice that the character I created in the introduction to the game is not the same with the character I'm using right now. That is because this character was started before the actual introduction for y the playthrough for YouTube. So, I'm playing with this character. The other one was just to create the little interaction because, you know, w what's the better way to start with a game? Of course, start with the garden interaction. Don't, don't go anywhere else. <laughs> so I had to make the introduction. So I just made the same looking character, but started all over using some different mechanics. Um, here you can see me looting food because I'm a very hungry person. I don't... I didn't have breakfast, so I have to loot all these things. Okay... Well, I'm just gonna ignore it because... I'm just gonna ignore it because I'm gonna ignore it. How else to put it? Y it's not why you came here. And I'm probably gonna load the game because it was just, you know, the adventuring. Adventuring for it. So, as you see, the exploration of Skyrim can go at your own pace, wherever you want. I actually went really, really far ahead to the left. I'm not gonna show you much of the map so you don't feel like it's spoiling to you anything. I went all the way here from the beginning, from Helgen, all the way here to Banner Mist Tower. Exploration can go in your own pace. <laughs> yes, I like hunting small animals because they feel my soul gems. Very good. Alright, I think uh, we're just gonna go ahead and explore additional content inside the game. I just don't know where we're gonna where the life's gonna take us because right now what you see is me hunting on little foxes. Me missing miserably. But not the cheapest orky shadows. Very good. Let's see what let's see what actually what arrows do we have. Do we have some okay we have some glass arrows, not a lot. We can see some wolves over there. That's a hit! That is also here. Not so horrible after all, huh? <laughs> Let's just gather the spells. I'm gonna use them later on in crafting. In general, everything you harvest, except for food, 
junk items, books, all these things are used somehow and are heavily introduced in the economy. You can use the skins of the animals in order to make Lost. leather, in order to make armors, in order to make leather strips, which are used in all of the crafts in the game. It's not, it doesn't hurt to have all these things. It doesn't hurt to gather them. You don't necessarily have to pay for them. You can just go ahead to the wilderness, kill some wild animals, take their pelts, make leather out of these pelts, and create what you wanted for smith, for, for the smithing skill, if you are a smith. Or you might want to, as shown in the video I just made several minutes ago, <laughs> as I tried to show how you can increase your efficiency with enchantments. You can just go ahead and create the cheapest possible equipment and just go ahead and enchant it. No, Mike, you are a horrible archer. Why didn't you just fight with your fists? You know what? This is one annoying fox. I'm just gonna go ahead and take some distraction spells. In order to make it maybe a little bit different. You're dead, alright? When I catch you, you're dead. Yes, that's right. That's the fireballs in the game. <laughs> they, look, they look better than ever even, but they look a little bit... They actually feel not strong enough, in my opinion. But that's because I'm not a mage. I'm just fooling around with this thing. Notice how your mana does not regenerate when you are actively holding a spell. All the important things. Not that it matters to me, I, I was focused on stamina anyway. When you play as an assassin class uh, or an archer class, it's important to have your stamina high enough to be able to use this ability. To be able to use the eagle's eye. When you have high enough stamina, you will be able to use it for more, uh, more and more periods of time. Because as you use it, as the time slows down, you have your stamina consumed and if you won't have enough, you won't have enough for a whole fight. The general hint for any archer, for any archer who's trying to master this skill is to use it as little as possible and only when it really is necessary. The idea is to not miss any of your hits, which is really hard when you fight in close combat or in really far combat or you, when you're trying to predict the movement of the wild beast. Just aim, fire, release. Aim, fire, release. Aim, fire, release. Notice how the stamina doesn't consume all that much, but I'm also mi missing only minimal amount of hits. By that I'm improving my DPS in any, at any range, and I'm trying to conserve ammunition as well. At very difficult situations like this, it's okay to use it a little more, but be sure that it's gonna pay off and don't overdo it. If you feel that you cannot hit the target from such distance, just, you know, just press R, get your arrow, arrow back in your quiver and do it later. Nothing is gonna happen. Make also make short breaks in order to help conserve your stamina even more. In my case, it's not necessarily useful because I have 300 of it. In your case, when you have, let's say, 150 or you have only 100, the basic one, basic amount, just try to preserve it as much as you can. Use it in the moments when you really need it. And, of course, remember, when the enemy closes up too hard and you don't have anything useful to keep him at bay at this moment, in this precise moment, just go ahead and use the sprint in order to increase the distance with the enemy. Sprint is very useful when fighting against giants, dragons, and mammoths, because you, in general, as an archer, you don't really want to be at their faces. Just run away from them, and don't be within the danger. Okay, that's enough of archery blubber for me. Let's just go ahead and pick lock this lock. Very good, very good stuff. Alright, we're just gonna conclude on this, and I thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the content. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and share with your friends if you did. Come back for more content about Skyrim and other, and other good, great, actually, <laughs> and other great games. Thank you very much for joining, have a great day, and bye-bye.